Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to tell you the things you should know before you buy a watercolor box set. Now, this video is for watercolor beginners as well as for anyone who is thinking of buying a new box set of watercolors. There will be no footage of me painting color swatches or doing color mixing. Instead, I will be using the color wheel to tell you how you can tell at a glance just by looking at the names of the colors whether or not this is a good selection of colors for watercolor. This color wheel by the way is from the book Exploring Color Workshop and this is a beautiful wheel with many colors on the wheel. There are names of the paint written beside the color swatches. Now there is a lot to say about color theory. In this video I just want to talk about the most important things. So if you need to mix colors, you need primary colors like yellow, magenta, and blue. Primary colors can mix almost any other color, but the thing is there is no such thing as a perfect color, a perfect primary color or a pigment. That is one reason why there are so many variations of primary colors out there. So one set of primary colors will allow you to mix a limited range of colors. So in order to make your color palette more versatile, all you have to do is to include more sets of primary colors. So a palette with two yellows, two reds, and two blues is definitely going to allow you to mix more colors compared to a set with just one yellow, one red, and one blue. So when you look at a box set of colors, look at how many primary colors there are. So for example, with this set, there is only one yellow, Hansa Yellow Deep. Mayan Orange is, well, an orange. It's a secondary color. You cannot use secondary colors to mix primary colors. So in this case, you cannot use an orange to mix a yellow. There are two reds and two blues. So this set is limited in the sense that it only has one yellow. But that's not to say that this is a lousy set. I mean. Alvaro Castan and definitely knows what he is doing when he selected all these colors in the set. The thing is, with a limited color palette, it is easier to achieve color harmony. So as long as you have primary colors, even if it's just like one yellow, you will still be able to achieve color harmony as long as you know uh, what you're doing with those colors. So what's considered a good color selection? Well, you can select one cool yellow and one warm yellow, one warm red and one cool red, one warm blue and one cool blue. So that's a total of six primary colors and that should actually give you or provide you a rather versatile palette for color mixing. If you want to make that color palette even more versatile, then include one cool yellow, mid yellow, and warm yellow, and one cool red, mid red, and warm red, and same applies to the blue. If your color selection is spread out on the wheel evenly, that is actually very good. So for example, if you want to mix a vibrant orange, you should use primary colors that are close to that vibrant orange such as Indian yellow for example or new gamboche and a warm red like a scarlet. Um, here are two warm reds, cadmium scarlet and cadmium red. Now these two are actually opaque colors because cadmium colors are opaque colors so I will definitely avoid any set that has cadmium colors because cadmium colors are very difficult to mix with transparent colors. When we use watercolors, we desire transparency. Looking at a color wheel again, let's say if we want to mix a vibrant purple, in this case, uh, we should use colors that are closest to the purple or violet. So here you can use permanent Alizara crimson and permanent magenta with maybe French ultramarine, which is a really popular color. And if you want to mix a vibrant green, again, use colors that are closest to that green. In this case, a cool yellow, uh, such as Hansa yellow light or lemon yellow with uh, maybe phthalo blue green shade. And now let's analyze the color selection from a few watercolor sets. This first set is from Art Grav. The first thing I will want to do is to find what are the pigments used to create the paint. And I will look at the 
box here there is no pigment information so I will have to go online to find the pigment information and the names of the colors are also not really helpful it's red yellow and blue so why you need pigment information is because uh, with the pigment you will be able to tell whether or not the color is light fast uh, light fast basically means whether the color will fade when you expose the colors to light long enough you will want to have light fast colors in your palette because you don't want your colors to fade and also with the pigment you will know the name of the color and where that color is on the color wheel and using the color wheel you can predict actually how these colors will uh, mix so at a glance from what I can see this looks like a cobalt blue and this is definitely a warm red so if we want to mix a vibrant purple now using what we have learned from the color wheel to mix a vibrant purple you will need a cool red and a warm blue cobalt blue is not as warm compared to ultramarine and this warm red is definitely not a cool red so this limited color palette is going to have uh, some limitations when it comes to mixing a vibrant purple basically it's not going to be able to mix a vibrant purple and that is just me looking at the colors uh, like this so if you want to make this color palette more versatile for color mixing you will have to introduce additional primary colors and art graph they do sell other colors um, they sell a magenta which is a cool uh, red so with magenta you will be able to mix a more vibrant purple compared to using this this is a set of Schmincker aqua drop this is basically liquid watercolor so the colors here are opaque white lemon yellow this is py3 this is magenta pr122 cyan blue pb15 colon 3 and this is deep black now um, I don't usually use white for mixing with watercolors I usually just use white to paint over colors to create highlights so opaque white um, to me in a set like this is not particularly useful um, but I do still use opaque white occasionally but it will be more versatile to include another primary color uh, same applies to deep black and do note that this lemon yellow it uses the pigment py3 now different brands will name their colors differently so for daniel smith their py3 is actually called hansa yellow light whereas for daniel smith's lemon yellow they are actually using the pigment py175 here for schmincker lemon yellow they are using py3 so it's important to again look for the pigment information rather than just rely on the name of the color this magenta uses PR122 now PR122 is sometimes known as quinacridone magenta for Daniel Smith they actually name PR122 as quinacridone lilac you can use black to paint shadows or to create grays by diluting this but your color mix is going to look more interesting if you create the grays or your blacks using the mix of the three primary colors because when you have your wash uh, show off the individual colors that are used to create that wash it's going to look more interesting compared to just black where there is no color within the black this is a set of M. Graham watercolor so we have azo yellow aerolin now aerolin with Daniel Smith is actually using PY40 um, cobalt yellow so here it's actually using PY151 which is actually called azo yellow yeah it's correct it's azo yellow so azo yellow is a uh, mid to cool yellow it's a really strong color this is a fantastic color by the way i love this color and we have permanent alizar crimson a cool red so using what we have learned from the color wheel when you have a mid yellow and a cool red uh, you won't be able to mix a vibrant orange so that's the limitation with this particular set here and we have a cool red and warm blue so this set will allow you to mix a vibrant purple 
there is also green. Green is considered a convenience color because you can actually mix green using yellow and blue. Green it can be useful if you use a lot of green. If you if you paint a lot of uh, plants, vegetation, uh, green can be useful because it's going to help you save a lot of time from mixing these two colors. And yellow is a color that is very easy to make dirty. So having green is helpful. I usually use green on paper with some ultramarine added to make the green darker. And burnt sienna is another really useful convenient color. You can use this to mix with ultramarine to produce beautiful grays. So even though this set has five colors, um, not a lot of colors, but it's quite a versatile set for color mixing with the only limitation being you can't mix a vibrant orange. Let's look at this 10 color set again. This is the Alvaro Castanet Master Artist set. Now that is Swift actually sells a lot of signature sets. So at a glance, we can see there is one yellow. It's a warm yellow. So the set is going to be limited to mixing warm colors um, like warm yellows, warm orange. There are two reds, uh, deep scarlet and pyro red. Oh, there are no cool reds. So the blues are ultramarine blue and cobalt blue, a mid blue and a warm blue. So the primary colors in this particular set, um, they are all warm colors. So you can tell that Alvaro Castanet, he prefers to paint with warm colors. Viridian, which is considered a cool green. So if you don't have a cool yellow and a cool blue, it's going to be quite difficult to mix a cool green, which is perhaps why this color, Viridian, is included. And Viridian is not as vibrant or as strong compared to Thalo Green. So it's a slightly easier color to use. Burnt Sienna Light, very useful for mixing with Ultramarine. There is a Mayan Orange here. Yellow Ochre, really convenient for mixing skin tones. Neutral Tint can be used to darken colors uh, very quickly. So this looks like a pretty nice uh, selection with the only limitation being uh, you won't be able to mix like cool uh, colors cool as in in terms of color temperature cooler colors so here on the packaging you can see one of Alvaro Castanet's painting it's a very warm color palette with uh, skin tones and uh, reds let's take a look at this 12 pan watercolor set from Schminker so I can see cadmium yellow light and cadmium red light so these two are opaque colors so when I see cadmium or opaque colors in a set I'm not particularly interested to get the set anymore because uh, Opaque colors are very challenging to mix with other colors. You can create very muddy mixtures very easily with opaque colors. But that's not to say that opaque colors or cadmium colors are bad. Um, they are good depending on the type of subject that you paint. For me, I'm usually using watercolor with pen and ink. I need the paint to be transparent. So these two are not transparent. So this particular set is not suitable for the type of art that I create but it may be suitable for the type of art you, you create. Um, let's see what else we have. A cool yellow. This is lemon yellow, a cool red. And um, it doesn't have a warm red. Cadmium red light should be a orange or warm red, but you won't be able to mix a vibrant orange uh, just by using these two, lemon yellow and permanent carmine. It has ultramarine and Prussian blue, so two blues, two greens, uh, two earth tones, one yellow ochre and English Venetian red, which is supposed to be an opaque color as well. Now opaque colors are best used on their own or with very uh, minimal mixing. Um, you can just apply them straight onto the paper. I usually use opaque colors to paint over certain areas, so maybe for opaque red, I can use it to paint the car lights or traffic lights. Um, there is a sepia brown. Now there is no French, sorry, there is no burnt sienna. So sepia brown will be the earth uh, tone, earth color alternative that you can use to mix with ultramarine to produce um, grays. And there is one ivory black. The color selection here is actually not too bad as in 
we have a cool yellow but there is no cool blue so you won't be able to mix a cool green like a thalo green but they have thalo green included there is a cool red and a warm blue so you can mix vibrant purples for a vibrant orange they don't have a warm red and warm yellow but they do have this cadmium red light so yeah it's it's a good selection of colors just that i don't like the opaque colors and there are three in this set and there is this ivory black as well which you cannot use to mix with other colors that easily here i have two sets of roman schmal watercolor um, i cannot remember whether they are bought by me or whether they are actually review sets anyway at a glance i can tell that this set here is going to be more versatile for mixing compared to this set here because there is only one red here and it's a cadmium red it's an opaque color here there are um, there's one opaque color it's cadmium vermilion but it has two reds there is also a cadmium yellow deep so i guess if you want to mix a vibrant orange you can use these two opaque colors or just use quinacridone gold uh, let's see if you can mix a vibrant green you probably can with this lemon yellow and prussian blue for a vibrant purple you will need a cool red so there is no cool red so that's the limitation of this palette but they do have this mineral violet which is a violet or purple so the only uh, limitation here for this set is the two primary colors here which are opaque this is the other set so we have uh, one two three three yellows two reds and two blues there is no ultramarine so it looks like uh, you won't be able to mix a really vibrant purple but you can probably still mix a purple or violet with uh, this red aquarius red pr214 and uh, maybe cobalt blue now many of these colors are like aquarius red um, what's this i cannot even pronounce this name uh, gray uh, kaput mortem and what do we have here mineral violet aquarius green cypress brown umber all these names are um, sounds pretty um, they sound like they are just created for marketing so it's very difficult for me to uh, know how that color will perform just by looking at the name of the color aquarius red i have to go find out what the pigment pr214 actually uh, does okay so here's another set from roman schmal um, we have two yellows aquarius yellow and venetian yellow earth uh, two reds okay so there are no cadmium colors here great um, we have two blues as well a warm blue and a cool blue french ultramarine and thalo blue so this set is going to be more versatile for color mixing compared to the other uh, two sets this is quite nice this is a nice set the last set i want to show you is this set from core watercolor so the cover has some mixing wells so here we have nickel azo yellow hansa yellow light quinacridone deep gold this is great because we have a cool yellow a mid yellow and a warm yellow and we have pyro red light permanent alizari crimson quinacridone magenta again fantastic a warm red uh, mid red cool red and for the blues we have ultramarine blue very classic color and thalo blue so this is also really good a warm and a cool blue so this selection of eight colors is fantastic this will allow you to mix really vibrant secondary colors from the color wheel the other four colors are just convenient colors uh, this is viridian green burnt sienna for mixing with ultramarine and pins gray for darkening colors quickly yellow ochre allows you to mix skin tones very quickly um, yeah so this is probably the most versatile palette for color mixing 
out of all the other color palettes that I've shown you. And all these colors are transparent as well. There are no cadmium colors. So that's how you can use the color wheel to help you with your color selection. And when you look at watercolor boxes, when you look at the colors, go for sets that have the warm and cool versions of primary colors like warm and cool red, warm and cool yellow, warm and cool blues. There is another variation of the color wheel in this book with even more paint suggestions. So looking at this color wheel, um, remember it's good to have a cool and warm yellow. So you can actually just select any of the cool yellows in this area. It doesn't even need to be a very specific cool yellow. Any cool yellow in this area will do. So for example, you can select a transparent yellow. Sometimes it's called nickel azo yellow, PY150. Hansa yellow light, lemon yellow. You can also get azo yellow for warm yellow. Again, you can just select any of these colors in this region. Can be new gumbosh, Indian yellow, Hansa yellow deep. And same applies to this area, this area, um, this area, and this area. Now for blues, um, you cannot go wrong with French ultramarine or ultramarine blue and phthalo blue green shade. Those are the two most uh, classic um, blues, the most useful blues you can get. You may also want to add cobalt blue as a mid blue. But for yellow reds and yellow reds and magenta, there are like so many variations you can choose from. It can get quite confusing. Anyway, there is a variation of this color wheel available on Handprint's website with even more paint suggestions. So I will link to you uh, to where you can find that the handprint color wheel in the video description below. This by the way is a wonderful book on understanding and using colors. All right, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, consider doing so for more art videos. Thanks for watching, see you again.